right now on Denver 7 News at 6 a.m. with lots of applause. Outbursts. And words of encouragement for the nation. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. President Biden's first State of the Union is in the books. We have 360 coverage taking a deep dive on what he said and the new responses overnight. From statements about our economic growth to the progress we've made in the pandemic. I'm Denver 7's Club Portal on fact-checking the president's speech. Plus, a bit of good news for Marshall Fire victims in Louisville. How the city is helping them save costs while trying to rebuild. And planning for summertime, backpacking permits for Rocky Mountain National Park go up for grabs in just a few hours. Yeah, those <laughs> reservations are like concert tickets too. You yes. gotta be quick if you wanna snag one of those times. We're gonna hear from the Park Service on how the process is a little bit improved mm. this year too. Good Wednesday morning to you, I'm Brian Sanders. I'm Nicole Brady. It would be great if it was already camping season because it it's gonna like be that. another beautiful day outside. Lisa, uh, we're staying in the 60s for a little longer. Yeah, a little bit of a tease this next mm -hmm. couple of days. Little taste, a little hint of spring, almost summer-like in some spots. It's gonna be upper 60s to even low 70s this afternoon afternoon at the bus stop this morning as your kids are walking out the door shorts and just a sweatshirt this morning to get them through the first cool hours and then we're going to be at about 70 by the time they get off the bus this afternoon so you can say yes to the shorts today we're looking at another beautiful start low 40s this morning winds are southwest at about 10 to near 20 miles per hour centennial currently 43 Erie and firestone you're a touch cooler right around freezing this morning but on the west side of town we've seen some neighborhoods near 50 look at golden this morning a really mild 45. Here's a look at our high. So we're going to be about oh, 25 to 30 degrees warmer by this afternoon near 70 here in town. Look at the southeastern corner of the state near 80 Jace in La Hunta and Lamar. That's not spring like that's almost summer like. Hello Dodge City. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right now we have a good drive going on. Not seeing any significant big problems. Very typical slowing right now on that eastbound side of 270 coming from I-25 passing the refineries. Take a look from the camera back here at York and you can see that line of traffic just heading right through there. It just gets a little bit better once you get to about Vasquez or so. Very typical for 270 to be just like this. We just need an extra lane in there and that's not going to happen for a while, at least until the I-70 project's all done, but that's one of the next ones to get fixed. The rest of the drive looks just fine, north, south, east, or west, including to or from the airport. It was an historic first. Two women sat behind the President of the United States during an official State of the Union address. Vice President Kamala Harris and Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi cheered behind President Biden. All morning, we're diving deep into what he said and new reaction to it. This half hour, a 360 look at how the President addressed the Russian invasion, as well as COVID. We'll fact check his energy proposals, explain the Republican response, and show you the outburst from a Colorado Congresswoman that has a lot of people talking this morning. Well, the Russia Ukraine invasion was expected to take center stage during the speech. Ukraine's ambassador to the U.S. was among the president's guests last night. She sat next to the first lady and received a standing ovation when she was introduced. Several members of Congress also showed their support for Ukraine as well. The audience was sprinkled with blue and yellow in their clothing and on pins, as well as several Ukrainian flags. And during the speech, President Biden announced new restrictions aimed at hurting Russia's economy. I'm announcing that we will join our allies in closing off American airspace to all Russian flights, further isolating Russia and adding additional squeeze on their economy. He has no idea what's coming. The president is also outlining his plan to emerge from the coronavirus pandemic. He said his administration will work to keep offices and schools open, and he called on Congress to end the political polarization of the virus. Let's use this moment to reset. So stop looking at COVID as a partisan dividing line. See it for what it is, a god-awful disease. Let's stop sending each, seeing each other as enemies and start seeing each other for who we are, fellow Americans. Starting next week, Americans can order more free COVID tests. And the president said the administration's scientists are working hard to get a vaccine authorized for children under five. Meanwhile, in the Republican response, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds criticized the president's record both at home and abroad. We're now one year into his presidency, and instead of moving America forward, 
It feels like President Biden and his party have sent us back in time to the late 70s and early 80s, when runaway inflation was hammering families, a violent crime wave was crashing our cities, and the Soviet army was trying to redraw the world map. Reynolds said reckless government spending triggered inflation and Democrats mishandled the pandemic by imposing overly restrictive mandates. She called the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan under the president's watch disastrous. In response to Ukraine, she said the president's approach to foreign policy has been too little too late. So we are hearing a lot of claims from both sides of the aisle, but we want to help you separate fact from fiction. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon is running through the claims. Colette, uh, start us off here with what they said about oil prices and oil reserves. Yeah, it's on everyone's mind, right? Mm -hmm. During the State of the Union, the president said the U.S. has been working with 30 other countries to release 60 million barrels of oil from reserves around the world. Half of that is coming from America. Of course, the hope is to lower gas prices and slow inflation but there's still a lot of energy anxiety surrounding the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Oil prices jumped $5 just yesterday to a level not seen in more than eight years. And gas prices in Colorado are up six cents from last week before the invasion. Overnight, an analyst for Gas Buddy says the national price will jump as much as 35 cents within the next two weeks. Now, sticking with energy, Biden said his clean energy agenda would cut costs for families by an average of $500 a year while combating climate change. But that needs some context. Those savings won't be seen for almost a decade. That estimate is from a nonpartisan research group that looked at how new regulations on the federal and state level could cut greenhouse gas emissions and the impact that would have on American households through clean energy tax credits. And that's only if Congress passes a major clean energy bill. And of course, COVID came up in the State of the Union with Biden saying the new CDC guidelines where most Americans can go mask free. That's an encouraging sign. And thanks to the progress we've made in the past year, COVID-19 no longer need control our lives. I know some are talking about living with COVID-19, but tonight I say that we never will just accept living with COVID-19. Those new rules from the CDC are based on hospitalizations, not community transmission rates. And while hospitalizations are dropping off, deaths are still high. Live in the studio, Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. Thank you, Colette. This morning, of course, a lot of people are talking about Colorado Thank Congresswoman you. Lauren Boebert. President Biden was near the end of his speech calling on Congress to pass legislation to help injured Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans when Boebert interrupted uh, blaming Biden for the deaths of 13 service members who were killed during the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. A cancer that would put them in a flag draped coffin. I know. <laughs> Bobert wore a shawl that read Drill Baby Drill, a statement in support of increased drilling for oil and gas. Denver 7 spoke to Colorado Congressman Jason Crow after the speech, and he had some harsh words for fellow Representative Bobert. We've known for a very long time that uh, Lauren Bobert doesn't know what she's doing during a moment where uh, the president was trying to honor our fallen uh, as the commander in chief, uh, a very somber moment uh, that uh, both Republicans and, and Democrats we're recognizing and reflecting on. Uh, she took it upon herself to uh, show politics and try to interrupt the president's speech, uh, which was an entirely inappropriate. Representative Crow is a veteran himself. We have a rundown of the president's speech as well as more fact checks on his statements right now on the DenverChannel.com. Lisa. It is now just about 610 and a really pretty start to the day. And look at our warm up this morning. We're going to be at right around 58 degrees as early as 10 o'clock and then we'll tack on another 10 to even 12 degrees. Highs will be right around 70 this afternoon. Nice and warm today and tomorrow. No big changes. A much bigger change this weekend. We'll take a look at just how much colder it gets and how much snow we're expecting coming up. And overall, the drive looks pretty nice. Just starting to get busier here on that north side of town. You can see that from Air Tracker 7 from 120th on down through the Thornton Parkway, 84th Avenue, getting down past Highway 36, I-76, and past 58. So a very typical start to the north end. Take a look at those travel times on the south end in just a minute. Making it easier to rebuild. The new exemption the city of Louisville is allowing for victims of the Marshall Fire. And get your clicking finger ready. Backpacking permits for Rocky Mountain National Park go up for grabs online soon, but you'll have to act fast.